Welcome to another, um, I don't even know if it's an episode or an edition or what it is, but it's Chase Jarvis Live. And we've been bringing this to you for uh, about a year now, half a year. And it's an internet show and it's open-ended. I'm a photographer and a director and I guess the goal here at Chase Jarvis Live is to kind of integrate all the things that I love um, or that are interesting to me in my life, mostly around photography, filmmaking, um, but also a lot of culture. I've had guests on here, uh, hip hop guys, uh, we've had cultural critics, um, artists, and today we're gonna bring in some folks and talk a little bit about food. Um, food, photography, travel, and how all that integrates. Um, just moments from now, Penny de los Santos, which is some amazing names here, Penny de los Santos and Barnaby Dorfman. About, I mean, you can't get more showbiz than that. Um, they'll be joining me. Um, Penny is a National Geographic photographer, really focuses on food, culture, travel, and, and Barnaby is the founder of an amazing site you must check out called foodista.com. It's basically the world's first, largest, most badass um, online encyclopedia for food. I like food. You can probably tell by my midsection. But before we bring those guys in, uh, I wanted to, t I mean, uh, first of all, I got to confess, I had some caffeine today. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit more um, to be faster paced than normal. Um, that plus champagne you know, up in the morning and down in the midday here. Um, I want to tell you about a couple things. First of all, all the Apple stuff was really exciting. I don't know if you watched uh, Steve Jobs' keynote. We've got Apple TVs in the house. I've been a big promoter for a long time, and now it's finally really good. Uh, I'm very excited about that. Some new shuffles and. I'll let you go play in internet land after this, uh, but I was excited to hear that. But even better than Apple introducing new toys today is me introducing my new book. If you can believe that. I'm gonna tell you something that's kind of funny right now. This is a 240 page hardback book, but this isn't the real book and this is not hardback. This is a mock. This is a mock cover where we decided to lay it over a book so we could see and feel what it felt like. But this here book is available now on Amazon.com, um, Barnes and Noble, and Borders, I believe. Um, it's the culmination of a three-year study of portraiture, uh, me documenting underground cultural leaders in Seattle, and it's applicable much broader than Seattle. If you have a city that you live in that you're fond of, that's driven by culture, art, um, uh, I guess all of the things that drive the places that we live, it's really about the people, and this is an ethnographic and visual study of that, and I couldn't be more proud to bring it. It's, it's been in the works for a long time, and it is available right now at those three places. If you go search Seattle 100, um, I got a blog post about it, and go check it out. The thing that I'm gonna be doing that I think is more interesting, between now and when you actually would be mailed the book, um, which is, it, it hits warehouses October 10th, so you probably get it somewhere in the 20th, is between now and then, I'm going to blog, share, do a lot of video blogging, uh, and even have a live show or two about the process. Um, the behind the scenes, everything that's gone into making that book to date. We have a huge gallery show. We're printing between 40 and 60, uh, 40 inch by 60 inch prints. That whole process, how we're doing that. Um, all of the preparations that go into the party, all the behind the scenes, closed doors, all the media stuff that we're doing. So if you're interested in launching a book, this is gonna be the, the field guide on how to do that over the next eight weeks. So lots of cool stuff going on there. I mean, here's some like, here's some um, proofs. Like this is what the printer sends you to approve. These are, yeah, I'll, I'll show you those later, I guess. Anyway, there's another version of the cover. There's my friend Greg, anyway. But, uh, oh, and this, uh, there's also, if you go to the blog, chasejarvis.com slash blog, there's a lovely story about the Seattle 100. Just has my picture on the front, which is awkward. But, um, and that can all be found in the blog post. So, uh, that's all my preamble, long and, long and um, winded. I better have a sip of this, hold tight. Um, but, now, without further ado, Reminding you to ask questions at hashtag CJ Live on the old Twitter. Uh, without further ado, I want to bring in two friends. Where are you guys? You're hiding behind the post. Welcome, Penny de los Santos and Barnaby Dorfman. The crowd goes wild. 
Hi there. Hello. I, we, I'm, I would hug. We but hug? We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna hug, but I, I, I blow my mic. Where do you want us out. to sit? I want you to sit wherever on the couch, please. Take a seat. Wanna be? You wanna be? My good man. Nice to see you. I'll be right over here. You should turn your phone off, probably. Not That's off. My friend just, just asked if you were single, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, my wife Kate might have a might have a thing or two to say about that. Um, welcome. Yeah, but, Thank you. Just so you know, you and I, and you and I and you two, we can all have a conversation here. If you do feel like you need to dress the camera, it's the one with the red lights on top. If you need to deliver a message like the president, that's how you do it. Okay. Um, <coughs> but again, welcome to Chase Jarvis Live. Very, very <laughs> casual environment. Sorry for breaking my audio guy's eardrum there as I drag the chair across the concrete. Um, wow, so let me give you the background as I see it on how this whole thing came together. Um, we at, uh, over at Creative Live, one of my side projects that hopefully you all are big fans of, um, we had a big wedding last week with Jasmine Starr. It was a five-day workshop, and we decided to plan this event in four weeks, which is <laughs> hell. To plan a wedding, select a bride and groom, and do a huge production that's broadcast worldwide to hundreds of thousands of people. Um, one of my favorite spaces in Seattle um, is a space owned by a good friend of mine, Joe Winnie, over at Theo Chocolates, which is not too far away. Gave Joe a call. Hey, Joe, Theo Chocolates, how's it going, buddy? I would love to do this thing. He's like, oh, man, there's some amazing people already using the space that weekend, um, so it's probably not going to work. And I said, who are these people? I've got to meet them, because if they know about this space, I want to know about them. He put you and I in contact with one another, and we chatted, and you were gracious enough to, um, to let us butt right up against your guys' event, and we, sh we had the wedding there. It seemed like a crazy idea at the time, but uh, I think it worked out incredibly well. It did work out, and yeah. one of the things that I like the best about it is you and I, you and I got to meet. Yeah, no, that was fantastic. Um, an amazing entrepreneur, <coughs> foodista.com. I'm a huge foodie, um, and uh, I think I may have talked to you about my songs for eating and drinking yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Where, where With our other mutual friend, friend uh, Michael Head. Yeah, yeah, yep. good, good buddy of ours. And again, integrating photo, video, art, culture, and, and food. Yeah. And then you were gracious enough to introduce, I said, oh man, I would love to have you on the show. And, and I'm kind of right now doing shows about things in my industry that I don't know very much about. I had Jasmine Starr on last week. I don't know, the first thing about wedding photographer, photography, I'm terrified of the mother of the bride. <laughs> um, I can deal with a fleet of art directors and ad, and ad agency folks from all over the world but I, the mother of the bride is scary to me. But <clears throat> So we learned a little bit about wedding photography last week, and I talked to you about food, and you said there's nobody better than Penny de los Santos. And I started uh, inquiring um, with you and you and your team and the idea of all of the wonderful things that you have online and learning a little bit about your stint with National Geographic um, and your travels all over the world. So. Is that fair to say that's like the two and a half minute summary of why we're sitting in the same room together? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's, it's certainly how it, the genesis of it. But I think there, are, as we've every time we've talked, there's all these connectors that we keep discovering. So I think we're probably going to discover a few more. We'll probably uncover yeah. more. Yeah. You guys, are you, you guys happy with the beverages that you've got? I am. You're, I had something over there that I forgot to bring on set. What is that? We have we have. Norton well, thing. it's exactly what you're drinking, but Norton. Can you help with some champagne Sorry. for Penny? Thank you so much. <laughs> so let's get down to not even brass tacks, to the fun stuff. Because, see, phones just I was on the radio the recently, and, and a friend of mine texted me, dude, I hear you on the radio. And I thought my phone was off and it rang. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Why would you text me while I'm on the radio? I actually do that, that to friends. <laughs> I have a lot of reasonably famous friends, and I'm always blowing up their pocket. Yeah. And I can see them, like, <laughs> my friends are broadcasting the World Cup, and I can see them, like, struggling to turn their phone up. It's funny. Um, well, let's start first with one of the things that I wanted both you guys on the show is because it seems that, that everyone here, myself included, have created a life for themselves in and around the things that they love. Mm -hmm. So for the folks at home, it doesn't matter if you like photography, food, neither, or something very different. We've all made a life, a life for mm -hmm. ourselves around the things that we love. Wow. Talk to me about your like your story leading up to where you have found yourself right now? Hmm. Well, it's a, uh, I mean, I think any photographer would tell you it's, God, it's a long road. Mm -hmm. You know, it starts out pretty uh, slow. Mm -hmm. You know, you pound a lot of pavement. Um, 
and then you take a lot of risks. You don't have much to lose. You take as many risks as you can. Um, for me, it was uh, I actually went, was in, a, in graduate school and. Um, same here, but I quit that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quit. I oh, actually finished, oh, but my gosh, and I wondered if it was going to pay <laughs> off. But I actually I was pretty, you know, financially like not not having a lot of money, and uh, and I found this great story uh, in Mexico on the border in what is now one of the most violent cities in the world. And it was this prison where women and children, well, women serve time for like pretty big crimes. And the prison system has allowed them to keep their babies with them, their children. In prison. In prison. It's, it's crazy. Just think about that. Like, <laughs> I mean, the mental picture that when you first told me about that, I like, it's amazing. <laughs> like, hey, mama's going to shank you. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> no, it's crazy. And that's, I mean, immediately I was like, that's. That's a story, yeah. and I, I want to go do it. And I wasn't sure about access and all those things that you worry about as a photographer. Um, but I, I went. I went, and I mean, I scrounged up some money, and I got some miles for my brother, and I had like nine days. And I flew down there, and uh, I didn't get access like the first day. And then through uh, a relative, I was able to someone knew someone and they you have got a relative me in, who's like in, in tight prison with the prison system in Mexico. Well, <laughs> sort of. I didn't Okay, I need to I know. I wasn't going to talk about that today. Okay, well that, that'll be a different story sorry, for Dad. a different time. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so I, I managed to get access and it was funny because I'd been there the day before and the the warden was like, "I'm sorry." And I'd shown up with like, you know, a, a state official, you know, who's pretty much guaranteeing me access and they were like, "Sorry." And then the next thing I know, the next day, I, I show up with the right person, and they were like, absolutely. Was it a different state official, or was it the mafia? I don't know. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. um, that's, that's, there's a, there's <laughs> access. Yeah. Get it, it is how you about can get access. It, right. I mean, the night before, there was, you know, I had to go to this pretty shady bar, and I mean, it, this is true. Meet a man about a horse. <laughs> pretty much. I met the publisher of the newspaper. The local newspaper who coincidentally had his like weeks later had his entire newsroom shot up by the drug cartel it was pretty intense wow but he made a phone call so he does know someone got um, it i don't know who so i got and in is it, can i can i interrupt and ask is this a self-sponsored trip i know you, you talked yeah. about like so you're not a journalist working with a paper no. right you are solo and this is, I mean, this is a message to the photographers out there. Like, this is how you've got to put it on the line and send it to start getting these additional stories. And, and so you had no supporting media outlet. I didn't have, I just had a good story. And, um, and that's really what you have to start with, you know. So yeah, I just went, took a huge risk. And anyway, you know, however many tequila shots later, I get a phone call the next morning at my hotel and it's, it's one of the security men at the prison saying, you know, the, the warden has asked to meet with you. And I was like, oh my God. So I show up and he's like, I don't know who you know, but you can come in and you can photograph. And I was like, wow. Well, yeah. So I'm in the prison and I mean, literally the door shut behind me and that was it. Like <laughs> they left me alone. Wow. They didn't even put a guard with me. I should tell you, this is a co-ed prison. It was, it was pretty co-ed. I was yeah. about to say, I'd the be women... scared in a women's prison in right. Mexico, but. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. You just funny. have to level again. Level I was like, <laughs> it was wow. kind of intense. Um, and. The men and women are separated, but there are definitely some shady stuff going on. Um, you'd see men kind of coming and going. I saw prison guards going in and out of cells. You know, there oh. was mm. there's mm. some intense stuff. I bet. So I just really tried to keep focus on why I was there, mm. telling that story, because I knew that I could easily be caught up in that and end up staying in that. You know, right, never right. seeing the light of yeah, day oops, again. Sorry, right? lost your papers. <laughs> yeah, I lost you. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah, I was trying to, and you know, while you're in there, everybody's trying to tell you their story and trying to ask you to like, hey, can you take this paper outside with you when you leave today? You know, Can you take this for me? And I'm like, yeah. What year was this? I'm just curious. Well, I went back twice. The first time was, I think, in 99. And then I went back in 2006 or 7. Were you shooting all digital at that point? No, I shot film for both projects. So. Wow. And then actually, I mean, it ended up being like, an amazing project. I mean, it was incredible access. And the ironic thing was, after I left, the warden of the prison took out one of the inmates because he was having car troubles. So he took out one of the inmates to a, like an auto zone or something to help him fix his car because this inmate was like a really great mechanic. 
and the inmate escaped while he was in the auto zone, and so they actually imprisoned the warden. Supposedly, I don't know. But. Wow. Whoa. So Rule you didn't reversal. go back and visit him? I didn't. I haven't, I haven't gone back for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> next time you're like, hey, wait a minute, you were the guy who let me into this joint last time, and now I'm back. Now he's handing you oh, papers crazy. to try to get out. <laughs> you're handing me papers. I actually haven't been back to that town in a while. I'm a little nervous about it. But, um, but so Mother Jones and ended up buying the, the, in the entire story the first publishing rights. Wow. I got paid a pretty nice lump sum of money. This is before the bubble bursted with right. publishing. Right. Um, I think those things still happen, though. I think you can still make some good money on an original story. Oh, you just have to world. find the right publication. A lot of stories left untold. Yes, yeah, storytelling mm. is something that's never going away, and in fact, it's probably more important in our <clears> culture <throat> because there's there's so much noise. The signal to noise ratio of a crappy story to a good story is is really important, and if you can tell a good original story, I think there's there's a market for it, and even in the traditional publishing circles. But if not, we're all um, internet savvy and out of our own right, we can get it out there and, and tell that story, and hopefully somebody else will then pick it up, um, be it a larger online media source or mm -hmm. or a traditional media. Um, so keep okay. going now and tell me how what, what's the segue between shooting in a women's prison? You got your first big gig, mm -hmm. and and where you are now because right, you're, right. you're very involved in the food photography and food and culture photography community right now. Right, right. So talk to me about that and National Geographic and what, you know, and yeah. me meeting this guy. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So I get this, I put this amazing, this really nice body, powerful body of work. This together. body? <laughs> that body. <laughs> <laughs> I put that body together in a portfolio and I ship it to National Geographic. Um, and it's for, they have an internship and anybody can apply. You name it. Anybody can. Like you're, you know, cousin in Iowa who Great. photographs his dogs can apply. Um, and they get, I don't know, probably a couple thousand applicants. And, um, yeah, and we, so we get a lot. So I can imagine that they get a lot, a lot. Yeah, they get a ton. A little company called okay. National Geographic. And so, you know, they saw my portfolio and they called me and said, you got it. It's yours. This is, this is it. And so I showed up like a couple months later, first day, and they kind of give me this big tour of the building. And, um, Show me like the basement where all the equipment is and check out all this gear and go up to the director of photography's office and <clears throat> he's like, okay, we're ready to send you on your first assignment and he hands me this piece of paper and it, I open it up and it's like, I'm leaving for Paris like two days later and we need your checking account number so we can deposit this much money for your expenses and here's your fixer, here's your translator, here's your story and, and that's where it started. I mean, and I think up to that. <laughs> so surreal. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Just launching you. That's amazing. It was cool. I mean, and, and you know, he said at the same time, he said, our philosophy here is we throw you in the middle of the lake, and if you're good, you make it to shore. <laughs> so he's like, go. So, you know, I, and at that point, I was shooting film, all transparency, mm -hmm. color transparency, so. Um, Doesn't that suck? <laughs> God. I love film. I love film. I love print film. I used to love transparencies, and then there's that whole... Like, not a lot of room for interpretation beyond the time you actually take the picture part that I didn't like very much. It's you know, changed, you're locking yeah. it down. There's not a lot of latitude, but... Yeah, you're definitely shoot. bracketing right. and, like, trying to figure out what you want to say. It's totally different now with digital. Agreed. So, yeah, and, and uh, they did a whole series for, like, five or six years where they wanted to do every state in the country where they picked some random zip code. Mm-hmm. And it, the zip code was supposed to be quirky or interesting or something funny. And so I did like, I don't know, like 12 of those. So they sent me to like, so 12 different locations. They gave you like seven days. So you just had to hit Were the ground. Really, was it really running. random? Like they spawned the globe like they're No, it or? wasn't. But it was like, it was like go to Coming Oklahoma. to America, you know. <laughs> it was like go to Oklahoma City and photograph the Vietnamese community. Oh, what? Okay. Yeah. There's Vietnamese people living in Oklahoma, but there are. There's like a massive both of them. Go burgeoning. photograph both of them. <laughs> So, you know, it, this is actually a funny story because I land in Oklahoma City and I, I get to this, what they call the a Vietnamese community, and it's a strip mall. And I was like, this sucks. A strip mall? How am I going to make a story out of that? So I called my editor and, and the director, uh, my editor and the director of photography, and I was like, uh, I just want to be honest with you. I've got a strip mall here. Um, <laughs> And so We've all had to make those calls. <laughs> the, the photographers have all had to make those. Yeah, I'm here, and there's pretty much nothing. It's, <laughs> you know, it was crazy. I was like, this sucks. And so my editor, who's like this badass, hard ass, 
was like, Penn, it's up to you. You can leave. We'll still pay you. It doesn't matter. But if you want to stay, you can stay. Do whatever you want to do. Bye. She hung up. <laughs> so I stayed, of course. And I ended up like producing a pretty good story. It ran. And I think they were pretty happy. And they just kept feeding me uh, projects. Fast forward to 2000, I guess five years ago, 2005. And a friend of mine who used to be an editor at National Geographic, who's now switched to Sever and is the photography editor there, he started. Um, he That's not the gentleman that I met from Sever. Sever. For those of you who may not know, Sever magazine is an amazing food magazine. Amazing food magazine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Um, I don't think you. I, think the, I met so the executive director, I think. Is that. I was um, executive editor. Did you we meet had editor? James. Did you meet James? Yes, James Oslin? Right. Yeah. Did you meet Jim? At on stage when I went over to make oh, sure that's right. everything I, was good. You know, good. that's sort of a blur. Yeah, that's right. right. Yes, at the we event last him. week. Huh. Briefly, yeah. So that good is that dude. magazine. Yes, yeah, great. Yeah, he gave an awesome speech. Great, he did. Um, right. So he came and talked to you? No, not him. Not um, him. One of his, his director of photography. Got it. So, and, uh, yeah, I mean, Severs, what's great about Sever, and I'd known this, I just hadn't really... Um, I, hadn't, I knew the magazine ran pictures well. Mm -hmm. And for a photographer, I mean, I'm always looking for That's sources. The, yeah. where, you know, where, where, can I, where can I sell my pictures? Where can I get assignments? And um, who does it well? So it's not totally, looking like a, yeah, a that's bag key. of It's on the top movie. of my list <laughs> yeah, in terms of, it is literally for me, and I, you know, I love photography, I love film, I love food. And if you ask me what single print publication is at tops for the intersection of those things, so where is it, period. Mm -hmm. It's been that way for years, which is Sweet. why it was such a dream to connect with you. Do they have an online presence? Is it? They do. They've got a great website. What's it called? <coughs> Sabur.com. Sabur. S A. Help me. V E U R. S A V E U R. Yeah. Sabur. I was going to go my friend <laughs> Roots right there. Dot com. Sabur. Dot com. Um, and that kicked off your food love. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, it started with, and this is this is another another thing is that you'll get that first assignment and it, it's not going to be a great one it's going to suck mm -hmm. so it was like go shoot some go shoot an ice house in houston texas you know here's, here's it's a one day assignment it's not you know it's Sounds not like sexy. a poop sandwich yeah. you, you talked about this the poop other day. <laughs> <laughs> when you say ice house like you mean what does that mean in texas i, oh, I, I have, have a feeling i don't really understand <laughs> what you meant by that there is uh historically uh there used to be dozens of them throughout the state but it was before they had like electricity and they oh, oh so i thought maybe because it's, it's i mean i'm from the northeast where they would cut ice out of the lakes and put it in ice houses and right. keep it cold and when you talked about doing it in texas in the 2000s i, I thought maybe it was something well, like a place where they serve beer and they call yeah, it an ice exactly, house or, exactly that's is that exactly. what it is okay. yeah i mean right. now it's you know they and they're kind of open spaces and they're feel kind of like an outdoor honky-tonk. Okay. What, really what I like cool. about ice beer is that there's a lot of alcohol in it. <laughs> I've heard they can get more alcohol. Actually, I've never had an ice beer in my life, but I heard that they can. Well, well if you take it's the just, ice doesn't, the, the alcohol doesn't freeze, so if you take the ice out, this little food trivia, you want to increase the alcohol content in anything, you, like wine, you can freeze it, remove the ice, and there's more alcohol left in the really? what's left over. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that at lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> You can get a little slush going, strain it through a strainer, and you'll have a more oh, nice. higher alcohol content. Perfect. That's why ice wine mm -hmm. um, actually can have a higher alcohol content. Than See? That's cool. And sugar. Same thing with sugars. Damn, Food trivia. So I, Ice House in Houston. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, no, I love okay, it. Back it's to amazing. Houston. Um, and so, yeah, I worked the hell out of it like it was the prison. I talked about this at my presentation. I, I just worked the hell out of it. And I knew this editor. He's a hard ass, an amazing editor, one of the best editors I've ever had which is really great and if, if you're a photographer and you can work with good editors, that, man, that makes a difference. Um, yeah, and amen. so I worked the hell out of it. Don't you agree? Oh, amen. <clears throat> like that, they can like help make your work shine, find the things and push you. And the same thing um, in my line of work with the, in the, in the commercial stuff, um, if you have a great art director or creative director, it's very much like an editor in the editorial world. They can push you and get the most out of you and your images and your thought processes, uh, very, very, it's crucial to a really, like totally. a, a really inspirational piece, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like the moments I've had with editors, I mean, that, that was great about working with National Geographic is they fly you in to look at your film. So you're just sitting there next to someone and you're going through every single frame wow. and they're talking about what the hell are you doing? And then they're talking about, oh, almost. And they, you know, <laughs> they really kind of like, it's just cool, you know, and you, you take all that away with you. It's, and that just makes a difference when you're behind the camera back in the field and you're thinking about all those words that are going through your head and you're just 
words. It makes you move differently when you make pictures, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a photographer anywhere near the level of you guys, but it's one thing that when, that oh, almost that, that I hate about photography as much as I love it is you can't fix it. Like in, in writing and in words or you know my medium, the web, someone says, oh, you messed up this. It'd be better over here. We just oh, okay, we'll fix it. We'll just move it over there. And like, if there's a shadow in the wrong place with a photograph, I have a photograph I took in Thailand that I love, but someone looked at it and was like, oh, that shadow really, really ruins the photo. I was like, oh, no. And now you can't you know, not see it. You can not, exactly. Right. Yeah, so. You can't not see it. And yeah. Which is why I have so, such respect for, for what you guys do, because it is, it is a much more fixed medium once you hit that shutter, you know? Hmm. So. Well, I, I love the, this transition into Savour and having a, an amazing editor um, is like that, that's firmly rooted in food. So you had a, a com were you a food lover prior to connecting with Savour or was the Savour something that motivated a food love for you? No, I was totally, I, I think I've always had a connection. Like Chick-fil-A kind right? of food? Or? <laughs> Definitely. <I'm, laughs> maybe from, from kind of, Austin, like I hear right? the bell ringing, you know what I'm saying? I hear the Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco uh, Ding? No, I, I don't do fast food. I know. I'm just just joking. <laughs> no, I was totally. I'm totally into food. Absolutely. I was. I love. Made to cook. it an easy transition to Savour. Really. It, to it did, and and what it, what it really did, because Savour really does marry the culture and geography. They're all about. Look, I mean, they, they send you. They're, they're all about food culture around the world. So they really marry. Food and culture and geography together. So it's kind That's of like. That's why we're here today. There's a camera behind us. Yeah. So it's kind of like the National <laughs> Geographic of food. That's got what it. some people say. I don't got know. it. Got it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it kind of, I didn't have the food, you know, kind of right. the food beauty images. Right. But I, I worked on that. I worked my ass off on that. I tried, just, you know, studied it and spent a lot of time. A lot of hairspray and duct tape and toothpicks. <laughs> no, we're, we're going to talk about that in a second. I want to now transition to Barnaby's. Like, you, same question. Like yeah, yeah. Your background, give me a little bit of background for one, because sure. I know you've been, uh, I think you were, VP over at Amazon or mm -hmm. something, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yep. And, and you've had your rounds around kind of internet and technology positions. Was food always a love for you or was this a vision of, hey, there's a niche over there that I can go and fill? Like, what's, what's, the, what, what's your progression? Yeah, no, food's been a love. I mean, I've loved to cook ever since I was a little kid. I'm from New York City and was just grew up kind of in an area surrounded by so many different cultures and so many foods. And food has always, to me, been kind of a, a, a common denominator between people that mm -hmm. I've found and I've done a lot of traveling and it's been a, a great way of accessing many things in my life and you know breaking bread sitting with people is always great but then in high school and college I, I worked in cooking I worked in the Catskills at a resort uh, in high school and then for a, a top catering company in San Francisco cooking um, my first startup actually I'm on my fifth start my first was a chain of bakeries yeah, yeah I mean this was my first time as CEO but um, I've worked you know as an executive uh, sort of in the management team of five different startups including this one first one was a chain of bakeries it was um, uh, all scratch high-end bakery in Portland Oregon in the early 90s I was in my early 20s and wound up I had 130 employees and was general manager of this company that just exploded because we like were scratching my head at 10 like yeah, well we were we were <laughs> we were selling bread for like four or five times as much as anybody else in town and we had lines out the door and up the block literally because quality was just something that people it was our, our head baker had trained at the original El Fornio in Florence and we brought we imported an oven from France it was just this amazing experience um, from there, I, I went back and went to graduate school, um, got my MBA, and really shifted into technology. I spent my summer internship at MSN at Microsoft in 1996, so 15 years ago. Wow. And I've been in consumer internet stuff for 15 years now, and I won't go through every um, successful and failed innovation and startup that I've been <laughs> at, because there are quite a few. But in I, seven I, I, years... I want to note, though, there's some success and some failure. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. No, no doubt. I mean, so many, of the some, folks, so many of the folks yeah. that, that pay attention to whatever it is that, that I do or yeah. people that have, I have on the show, like, they, they figure that everything is, is a success. Like, all right, they're on there because there's no. success. We've no. all blown it totally. so many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can't succeed unless you fail. I mean, right. that's just the way it is. And, and the, the thing that I love about technology and internet technology and the web for, for me and I think now with digital for, for you guys is um, you can run those experiments. You can run that, 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 um, those tests and you, can, and you can achieve those failures more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you used fail to faster, fail, fail faster, fail faster, fail harder, yeah. exactly. And uh, yeah. I know for me, like with digital photography, um, my own photography, the, I, I really like shooting at night. And it was just 
just wasn't practical because by the time I got you know a roll of film back and discovered that I had completely blown the exposure, you know the moment was gone, the, the trip was over, whatever. You know, even your ability to learn from that experience yeah. was so far removed. Yeah, absolutely. So the immediacy. I'm a huge instant. I'm so impatient. Yeah. Instant photography. I mean, I, I have really done everything I can to pioneer the perception of this as a yeah. camera. Yeah, 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 with your um, app. Polaroid, yeah. for example, is yeah. a huge, is a huge. Are you, are you a fairly <laughs> impossible project? Have you been following yeah, of that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I've got, I have, I got a, I ordered a, uh, um, I'll bring this back to Amazon, actually. I, I ordered a, a used uh, Polaroid camera so that I could use the impossible film. <laughs> and um, one of the things I worked on at Amazon was, uh, so I worked for a company that uh, Amazon acquired. I was general manager of a website called BiblioFind. We had largest marketplace of used and rare books. We had about seven million books. And in 1999, they bought That's us. That's like four million more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we were in Cambridge, Mass, and Amazon bought us in 1999. And uh, some people may remember Amazon went from saying over a million things to over eight million things in a day. And that was the addition of our catalog. And, uh, and then I worked on expanding the catalog at Amazon from books, music, and video to the other categories, including um, gourmet food. I, I was the, the group product manager for all the new categories, and I ah. added gourmet food in there. And I've, I've been looking for how can I come back to kind of this, this passion and love for food and, and integrate it with technology. Um, learned a ton over seven years at Amazon. Um, my, my most recent position was uh, as a vice president in their search technology group, uh, A9, down in California. But I learned a lot about how to structure information and present it on the web, and um, spent a couple years at IMDB, the Internet Movie Database, mm -hmm. which is also owned by Amazon. Um, I created IMDB Pro, which is the subscription version that pe people who work in the industry use. Um, and so, uh, you know, a couple years ago, a lot of things fell into place. Um, my um, partner at home, Sherry Weatherell, and I, um, you know, she also is passionate about food, has lived in Japan, and you know, sort of that cultural intersection, part of why I love Subur so much, is the, it's food, culture, photography, writing, it's all there. Um, we reconnected with uh, a third, our, our co-founder, Colin Saunders, who was an engineer I'd worked with at Amazon, and his family's in the wine business, uh, and it was just all kind of fell together. But I was always looking out for that thread for how, how I could bring it together, uh, and, and quit the day job, so to speak, and go out on our own and start, found, we founded Foodista about two years ago. Foodista. Foodista.com. Just for a yeah. second. Foodista, uh, I was originally exposed to it, actually via my buddy, Michael, and um, wow, what an amazing project. If you yeah. haven't checked it out, you should guys uh, please check out uh, Foodista.com. It's a wiki, so it's updatable by anyone, um, and it's, uh, it's an encyclopedia of food, and if you're a foodie, um, it is, and, and you haven't dialed into that site. You're gonna, you're going to thank me. I will accept five dollar bills. <laughs> um, they have done an amazing job. Um, basically, it's the culmination of all your experience. It seems like all mm -hmm. the, the amazing product offerings at uh, at at Amazon and the company that you were at before that acquired it, and all the stuff that you've done with search, mm -hmm. um, and and now of course community as you're doing an amazing job cultivating community, bringing in people like Penny to your annual. Um, International Food Bloggers Conference, which is what was the event last yep. week. Yep. Um, it's again, it's, it's this creating a life in and around things <laughs> that you think are important to you yeah. and and are, are meaningful. What? Yeah. Let's let's. Uh, first of all, I want to. I'm going to pick up this little here uh, iPad, and I'm going to go to the phones. <laughs> um, Great. Hashtag CJ Live for questions for either Penny Barnaby, yours truly, or all of us combined. Um, and in the meantime, while I'm poking around on here, I would love to hear how, like, just let's avoid the backstory, but be in the moment about intersecting the things in your life that you love in and around your job. Like, what, like, yeah, like, what, what, like, what was it very conscious for you to say, I love food, I love photography, I can make a job at this mm. and be happy. You know, I'm going to be honest and say it wasn't. In fact, I struggled. I'm going to be honest. This is it's great. It's Oprah. <laughs> don't weep right girl. here. Just don't grab my microphone because my sound guy will get upset. <laughs> no, I'm going to be, I struggled with it. I really did because, um, well, because Sever, in my eyes, as a photographer, I didn't really see it as a, I mean, I, I'm wrong now, I can admit that. But I didn't really see it as a place for great photography. I didn't realize that at the point, because it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like National Geographic or, I don't know, I, 
name the list of a great photographic magazine. Sever. Sever. Now I can say Sever. <laughs> no, so I struggled with it. And I, I mean, there are times when I, I still do. But at the end of the day, I'm, um, you know, it, it took me a while to realize, wait a minute, Penny, you're happy. You're like in Brazil. Um, you're in, you know, you're in um, the south of France and you're making pictures. That's kind of what I always wanted to do. And it's around something that's pretty uh, positive, you know, and, and there's a lot of energy. And uh, I mean, the thing is, and I realized this and it took me a while, is that food is, is a huge connector, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of oh, like, yeah. it's a that's great, it's a great crossroads. There's that, yep. that word again. But I mean, every major moment in our lives is around food. When yeah. you get married to your beautiful bride, you know? Yeah, yeah. you had food at the you wedding. You had food at the wedding. Yeah. When people, I mean, we had a lot of sushi at our Did wedding, you? actually. Yeah. Cool. Was really cool. A any major moment, your birthday, uh, Hanukkah, funerals. I don't know, you know, funerals, yeah. yeah. So it, it is, it, it, it provides so much. It's comforting, it's um, consoling, it's celebratory. And there, behind all that, it, there's photographs. And so mm -hmm. it took me a while to embrace that. But I knew that when I was in the field, I still knew what, make, meant, what it meant to just make good pictures, whether it was about food or geography or people or landscape, whatever. So um, I, I, uh, I now am trying to like really, uh, like I, I started to integrate that idea more. Right. And I, I'm giving myself, I self-assign projects all the time. Let's talk about that just for a second. I don't want to go too far off the, the main question, which is integrating the things in life that we want to be important to us. Talk about self-assignments and look straight into that camera, and, or the one with the lights on over there, and tell them how important assigning photography to yourself is. Well, I mean, I, th I think for any photographer, it's, it's, the, it's defining. It's, it's, um, it's how you grow, and it's how you begin to establish a personal voice a personal style um, and I think it's also how you build confidence and you know I had a mentor tell me once that um, you're never gonna get that great assignment you have to give yourself that great assignment and that is so true so there's no reason why all of you shouldn't like book yourself a ticket to India or wherever that place is that you've always wanted to photograph just go. Mexico a Mexican prison <laughs> I can get you into a really great prison <laughs> Um, and, and what about you on that same, like... What yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that's, that's so amazing about the web and internet technology is it is so flexible, and it does allow people to take an idea. I mean, like, you've got an app that, that is um, kind of reflects uh, your interests, and you're leveraging these very, very versatile technologies. And I think, I don't care if you work for a major corporation or, or you know, a small deli, um, there's, you can start a food blog, you can start doing your own photography, writing. Um, if you're technically minded, you can figure out how to do some of the programming yourself. And so for me, I've always, in all my jobs, I've always self been self-assigning and kind of looking for what, what are we not doing that we could be doing and how might I make that a reality? And you know, frankly, I've um, pissed off some people doing that yeah. uh, a few times, more yeah. than a few times. Uh, but I've also created things that millions of people use every day and so and it's it's almost always self-assignment like you know as, as somebody manages other people I'm just giving them stuff that I know needs to be done and the world doesn't change based on what we know needs to be done it changes based on what creativity and ideas and you know that, that comes from everyone every individual that's the foundation of my particular personality I feel like uh, the foundation in, in large part of the show of kind of creativity and inspiration mm -hmm. and Nothing, I mean, you mentioned the, the iPhone app Best Camera, which uh, was a top 20 iPhone app last year of 150,000. It's something I'm very proud of, yeah. and it's something that we have an update coming very soon, just so you know. Um, it's been quite busy around here, but <coughs> like, those kinds of things, things that, that arguably get people to look at things in a new light, innovating is one of the things that's most important, I feel like, for the creative world. I personally believe that there's a, a, a creativity crisis in our country specifically, um, and looking at leaders like yourselves and your ability to go out there and innovate and make things happen and self-assign projects that are going to get people to understand this prison in Mexico or that they can have a, a food blog on their own. I mean, imagine just, just a couple of years ago, we required permission from someone else, from a publisher, from a, a photo editor or a, a filmmaker or a studio, 
to be able to have our work shared on any sort of a meaningful scale. Mm -hmm. And now, in 15 minutes, anybody at home or any of us here could have a new blog, a Twitter handle, a Facebook account, and we could be spreading our own message. <coughs> it's the first time in the world that we don't require permission to do that. We can do it on our own, and that is incredibly meaningful. That's a big part. as well I'm 100% self-taught mm -hmm. um, and and your guys' stories do a beautiful job of underscoring that so thank you thank you fast forward to Foodista mm -hmm. the nuts and bolts yeah so I mean thank you for your kind comments but it's super early for us I mean we we've been live less than two years um, and my goal you look so grown up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, and, and I, I think it's easy to lose perspective on the web because we have these devices and, you know, that, that it's, it's fundamentally changed so much of um, how things get done and how we live our daily lives. It's easy to forget that, the, you know, the web itself is, um, you know, right around 20 years old. I mean, things like back in 2000 when the internet bubble bursts, people were, it's over, it's done, that was a fad. That was four or five years before Facebook was founded seven years before wow. Twitter was founded. You know, these things are totally new. And so we're, we're really, really excited about the potential to help people find and discover things they want to cook and eat. And to do that, um, we've organized the site into different page types. We've got pages for thousands of different basic foods, commodities. So um, pork, pork belly, <laughs> soursop, uh, ajwain, Rambutan, you know, you name it. If you want to know what that thing is, I have no idea what they are. I tell you, you can go to Foodista and learn about them. Um, and uh, so, foods, um, cooking techniques, kitchen tools, and then recipes, and it's all organized. Again, I, I've, I owe a huge debt of gratitude to IMDb because it taught me how to think about relating information in, in new ways and linking to it. And um, uh, and we've expanded from there. We have now a question and answer p section, and we're starting to add pages about um, cookbooks. So, so kind of like IMDb has a page for a movie, we have, we're starting to add pages about cookbooks. Not the contents Great. of the cookbook, but what's it about? If sure. I want to cook French, what are the books I should be looking at? Um, and even products. We've stayed away from products because they're kind of complicated. But um, moving from pork belly to you know canned pork and, pork and beans, and you name a brand, and that mm -hmm. kind of a thing. And wanting to relate it all to each other, um, and, and, and working with a community of people similar to Wikipedia or IMDb, which is also user-generated mm -hmm. content, to have people have amazing knowledge and amazing passion. Uh, a quick story, I remember when I was at Amazon, um, I really learned that people will do amazing things to help um, just make information better. Uh, they had all these wrestling videos, old VHS tapes, you know, like the <laughs> WWF, right? You know, and, and I was in this meeting and um, one of the editors said, um, this guy just emailed me this Word doc, and it has the cast and sort of a synopsis of what happened for pretty much every wrestling video we have on the website. He just sent it in and said, I noticed you just have the tapes, you don't really have any information about them, and I'm a wrestling fan, and I, I compiled this because I own all these tapes. I thought maybe you could put it on the website. I was blown away. I mean, this is before, right. you know, like, even That's Wikipedia true. had really exploded in the way it has. So there are all kinds of new forms of, of, of um, collecting and organizing information. And that's on the sort of data side, which gets kind of dry and people's eyes cross when I talk about data models and things like that. Um, but there's also the artistic side, and recipes um, you know, are, are an artistic expression, or can be, not always are, mm -hmm. but many are. And photography, we welcome you know, people uploading photographs, both for an information basis, like what does Rambutan look like, um, and then what's an artistic use of, of um, achiote or something like that. Um, though, after your talk at our conference, the Food Blogger Conference, uh, I recognize that we need to improve the way we, the way we handle and, and display photos, because uh, mm, I was wow. so blown away by you. But. Yeah, see, you're, <laughs> you're influenced cool. and you're like, if I can say a little bit, actually, <laughs> just about our conference, you know, we, please. I think that, that as great First as... Tell, that, tell us the name of the conference. Okay, so it's the International Food Blogger Conference. IFBC. Um, IFBC. Last year, we wanted to go to an international a, a food blogger conference and discovered there weren't any. So we said, well, let's get a bunch of people in a room and call it a conference. And, that, and we were going to do 50. And then we, we sold, you know, decided to sell tickets, and we sold out in a few days, doubled it to 100, sold out in a few days, said, well, we don't, have, we don't have very long to organize this, so we'll keep it at that. We held it in a converted church um, over in uh, West Seattle. And 
you know, by all accounts, it was a great success, and we know that because a lot of people said, "How? Where do I sign up for the next one?" And then we were like, "Uh oh, <laughs> we just created something that we have to <laughs> no, feed. No, no, we have to, <laughs> we have to feed the monster, um, not the monster, but you know, the, the, these things take on a life of their own." Um, and so, so we partnered with um, Zephyr Adventures uh, to put on the second International Food Blogger Conference, and decided, "Well, we sold out the other one and had a waiting list. Let's invite back everybody and make it bigger." And um, we we contracted for the Theo space because we thought, what better place to have a food blogger conference but in the back of a chocolate factory? I mean, you just So cool. We had a wedding, yeah. a wedding yeah. in a chocolate factory. Yeah. You yeah. guys it's had a, a, a um, conference in a chocolate factory. Uh, Theo uh, Chocolates. I think it's yeah, Theochocolates.com. Theo, Theochocolates.com. Right? Um, amazing. amazing chocolate. And uh, um, really just you know wanted to bring together, we had three themes, food, writing, and technology. And we wanted to have it both be educational and an experience. And I, I hope we achieved that but brought in food from some of the best chefs around town. And actually we had like chefs from Zinn down in, in uh, Napa Valley come up and we had Daisley Gordon from Campania. And, and I bumped into Ethan and, Ethan, Ethan yeah, and Angela Stoll. And, Stoll. And, yep, yeah. um, amazing. You know, we I had dinner we went at a new for, place last night actually. Oh really? Was, yeah, I haven't been. Amazing. Um, and, and another, I think another uh, thread in this, which I see in both of your work is just always strive for excellence and for quality and so most of the chefs are James Beard Award winners or um, graduates of like, you know, Culinary Institute of America or just, you know, and the same with speakers. And that's kind of how Penny came into it was food photography and digital photography is something that a lot of bloggers want to do a better job of. And so when we were programming this conference, we just got in a room and said, in every category of everything we want to talk about, who's the best person we can come up with? And Sever so was, you know, number one, and we literally opened up the masthead and we were like, mm -hmm. Penny Dos Santos, that's who we want. You were the top of our list. And here you are. <laughs> but you know, it's funny. It's like shop, but shopping for the best is a great yeah. is a great example of yeah. um, when you're aspiring to um, a certain level of photography, or you're aspiring to um, to be the number one kind of person mm -hmm. or page in any any category online. It's like yep. you need to have someone that you want to be like, or you need to have someone who you, who's, whose ass you want to kick to get to where it needs to go. We can all win, there's room for everybody. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, that's the, the underdog spirit. And yeah. um, I really, I, I believe that that's like, motivations come in all, all, all shapes and sizes and forms, but like striving for that level of success, I think is a really important part of any endeavor. Oh, I agree. And I think a lot of people are not happy with where they are in their lives, professionally, whatever. And, you know, but then I talked to them about it and it's like, well, why aren't you there? And they're like, well, because I can't be. And then, you know, my mother actually um, is a uh, does uh, therapy and a motivational speaker, and she's really about um, uh, as a coach um, self defeating beliefs. Her name's Mandy Evans, and she, um, you know, has found that people just the main reason people don't get to where they want to be is because they just think they can't, or they have some, ex some not excuses the wrong right. word because that's so loaded, but they come up with a reason why they can't get there. And I think your example of again going to that prison was just like. There's totally self-motivated. I'm gonna I'm gonna capture this story and there's, then I'm gonna find the market and it's so inspiring. And, it is, um, and a big so. a big part of the like when I survey the landscape of things that are inspirational to me, it is that like screw it, I'm going for it yeah. attitude. Yeah. Um, with artists that I love, I mean, the, there's innumerable examples across the uh, horizon of people who have done amazing things when they thought they couldn't do nothing. Um, I mean, Jean-Michel Basquiat in mm. the 70s and 80s taking graffiti out of the streets and yeah. into the galleries. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. And I don't know necessarily that he had that ambition, but as soon as he realized it was possible, sure. he, he drove really, really hard at that. That's a, it's a great example. And mm. there's over and over, those are things that have inspired me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think it's a commonality between people who either are driven or um, are inspirators in and of themselves. Um, I promised to go to the phones a while ago, yeah, and we never, we never went. Um, Norton, my champagne glass is empty. If, if there's <coughs> room to top me off, Excuse me. I think he's probably listening to this broadcast on his headphones. So in five seconds, he will <coughs> he will hear me and come. Norton, can I get some more of that champagne, please? Thanks, buddy. Um, some champers. Some champagne. Um, the questions are pouring in now. I'm going to take one from Chicken Grit. Nice. Chicken Grit. Yep. Um, <laughs> What's the single most significant thing that has helped both of you get where you are today? Let's, let's 
Keep it as targeted as you can. What's the single most important thing? Do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> I, I volunteer you. No, I, I don't volunteer mind. I mean, you. I go for it. I, just <laughs> challenges. You know, somebody telling me I can't can't do something or that something's gonna be really hard, and me saying, "Oh yeah, I'll show you." I think it's probably. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I have a. My mother would definitely. I don't want to bring my mother up again and again in this, but uh, she would <laughs> say because I, you know, I was stubborn. Um, but uh, it comes out of that. It's just challenges. Yeah, that, challenges. The the way that we talk about challenges internally here at, at Chase Jarvis is that they're basically put there to keep everybody else out. Yeah. And if you're willing to bust through them, other people won't be. Um, and and that's how you can kind of arrive there. What yeah. about you, Penny? Man, I would have to say that um, <clears throat> I just haven't, I've, I, I take a lot of risks. I mean, I, mm. I push it really hard. Yeah. In terms of photography, I'll stay an extra day on a shoot if, um, if I don't feel like I have it. Um, and if I do feel like I have it, I'll stay an extra day anyway because it's really good. Mm -hmm. um, so I take a, a ton of risks, and I don't think those ever stop throughout your career. And in fact, I think that's what helps you grow. They just get bigger, actually. Yeah. The yeah. stakes get bigger, but again, the rewards do too. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the book that I kicked the thing off with here, that was a, a, a personal project that I can't tell you how much time and money is sunk into it. Pure, like massive risk going in and sinking years of your life, mm -hmm. only to kind of latch onto a publisher at the very end sure. and then have galleries get on board and have, yeah. but again, none of those things happen if you don't do the work. Like there's a million people mm -hmm. with ideas. The idea means about as much. Someone told me a great thing. I think it was Christopher, he's back there. Something about like if you put, Something in one, like, I'm not even going to go there because I think there's a dirty word in there, but, <laughs> but like, hope and wish is, without action is pretty much um, useless. Oh. That sucks. You got a fruit fly in, the, oh, he's coming out. He's had a little couple of cocktails. Go. Go. I think make it. Uh -huh. There you go. Saved. Just went in for a drink and then he's <laughs> away. Um, wow. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Comment more about storytelling is never going away. Hmm. That's Who's from, that from? Uh, Bon Vivant. Oh. Seattle Bon Vivant? Oui, oui. Bon Vivant. Oui, oui. Huh? Comment more about storytelling and that never mm -hmm. going away. Mm -hmm. Quote, storytelling is never going away. Well, I don't, I don't think so. I think, um, I think every photograph should have some amount of content that tells a story. Um, so, and there's power there. And I think whether it's a portrait or it's a moment or a geographical image, I think um, that there's always gonna be a, a demand for that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I still think that's what makes people love photography, mm -hmm. is that it has a storytelling power. You yeah, know? absolutely. I think, I mean, for me, it's <clears throat> one of the reasons that we have wanted to embrace food blogging and connect with food bloggers um, is that they tend to wrap um, food information, recipes, food photography in stories. And there is, you know, there's, I don't think there's a better way to learn. I don't think there's a better way to remember. And there's, there's certainly no better way to, well, there are a couple better ways of being entertained than stories. But mostly stories, you know, is, is the way we're, you know, we um, like to spend our time. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, actually, talking about your book, I was, I'll take a moment to mention um, our project. We have the um, uh, Foodista Best of Food Blogs Cookbook, which comes out, I think, a day before yours on October 19th. Oh, drat. Oh, did I? Try, no, I'm just oh, kidding. I, I love it. I yeah, love yeah. it. That's, we should, uh, well, like you said earlier. You can probably talk to your that. publisher, Andrews McNeil. Two oh, for one. Oh, wow. Where are they out of? <laughs> Kansas City. Wow, Kansas City. Uh, yeah. Hi, Kirsty. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was a project um, to uh, basically, one of the things that came out of our first conference was people wanted an opportunity to get it printed, uh, be published in print. Mm -hmm. And so we had this contest a year ago for people to submit blog posts with recipes, stories, and photography and allowed the, our users then to spend a month rating them. And then we shifted into a traditional, we had over 1,500 submissions, and we shifted into a traditional editorial process to produce a book with 100 recipe, blog post, um, photograph combinations. And the stories are very moving. I mean, and, and so it's just another example of story. Mm -hmm. I, you know. Yeah, story is not going anywhere. It's, gonna, it, it's always the thread of, I think, what rises to the top whether it be news, or the dinner table, or a life, mm -hmm. um, it's and and being able to tell that story well helps people elevate their ideas. I believe a lot of times, um, great ideas lack a story mm -hmm. only because someone hasn't sought 
to find that story. Mm -hmm. And that's what you did with the Mexican prison, for example. Um, and it's what I did with, with the Seattle 100 project. I want to tell a story about not just Seattle, but about underground culture and the people who drive it mm -hmm. in a way that hadn't been told before. Um, I have a question for you. Oh, God. I'm How the many? host. This is awkward. <laughs> I know you're around here somewhere, cameras. Please, how, come on, come on, let's how go. How many, so the book project, how many, yep. how many projects, personal projects, would you say you've done that didn't quite make it to a book? A lot. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. A lot. Most I of have them, so most many of those. Them, yeah, but, but they all, like, the, I'm an advocate of just making, like making totally. on a regular basis, make stuff. I mean, I shape my eggs in the morning into a little <laughs> sun and then I eat them. You know, I mean, I just, there's a lot of making is an important part of the, the process of my life. Um, and the more stuff you make, I'm not suggesting you make stuff, you aim to make crappy stuff, but the more you make, you, you, you start to discern what's good and what's not right. good. And, and so in the same way that I finally had the courage sometime in college to stop reading books that I thought sucked, <laughs> I'm 40 pages in, like, yeah. You know, Wait, you can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you're actually not, there's not a tractor beam that's pulling you through to the last page. And I, I do the same with a lot of personal projects. I kind of throw some out there and, and some grow and flourish and others die on the vine. Well, and I think that brings up a, an important point because mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of projects don't always make it to a book. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because I Absolutely think it gets okay. you to the next step. I have so many projects that but it, but it goes to, it goes back to something I said earlier with the book isn't necessarily equal success right the book is a, is a yeah, different kind of a different measure mm -hmm. and now again we don't require permission for anyone we can put things online which is the most perfect segue to one of our questions right here which is uh, from Dennis Dunage uh, are those photographs penny of the Mexican prison available online no. They're oh. Not, they're not. You know, I, uh, I need to put them up. I just haven't. Um, it, I don't know. Maybe you feel like this, but there are certain bodies of work that just don't jive don't, don't translate, with, yeah. with your website that you currently have. So maybe you need like to have another website for that body of work, you know? So prison and food photography, I don't know. If yeah, my yeah, and and, and I, I tell that when people say, I mean, I, yeah. I don't mean that, no, I don't mean that facetiously. Actually, I mean, is there, there are know, there shots of food in the? There's not in the, in the. There might be, but it's not a great image, you know. Yeah. Um, I I just haven't figured out how to marry or how to have a nice visual transition mm. in in that on a website. Yeah, my I, I have <laughs> gone against all the rules and and basically put put everything put images together that aren't together. I put them in separate galleries, but. Um, my, the commercial business that basically sustains this and, and pays for all that stuff is, is and pays for the personal projects, frankly, is robust enough that I can have just like, it's kind of shifted away from just photographer to, to maker. And here's this art project, here's a fine art stuff. I've, I've got a lot of gallery stuff going on right now and throwing it up there. And, and it's been largely against advice of marketing people. Mm -hmm. I, I know not, but it's, it's, um, more this is what I'm about, and if you can mm. cipher through it, then, and you want to still call me and hire me, I think that's, it's worked out okay, but I do, I do know the risk. I tell people to really only put the pictures up there that are very much like the pictures you want to get hired to shoot. Right. I'm breaking my own <laughs> rules, but. I kind of felt like that body of work was so sensitive, and there was so much stuff um, happening in that region, and there still is, and mm. part of me just felt like, pump the brakes, Penny. I just, I'm not sure I feel comfortable putting it up on the web. So Got it. Maybe I'll change my mind. Got it. Um, hey, Barnaby, what's the largest obstacle <clears throat> you've had to overcome in working with Foodista? This is from Forza Brian. Forza Brian. Wow, that's a good question. The largest obstacle. I think, you know, um, myself, you know, like um, walking away from, you know, a, a steady and large paycheck. Um, Working, you know, for a Fortune 100 company, um, uh, you know, and not. I mean, we did this. We self-funded for the first year, and um, kind of, you know, all the fears and things that come along with that, and uh, um, and also just uh, allowing myself to 
put it all on the line and also recognize that you know when you've worked for other people, um, even in other startups, uh, you know it's 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 not the same as kind of jumping out there. It's it's like jump. I mean, you're both entrepreneurs, so it's like jumping out of plane without a parachute in one of those action movies where your buddy's bringing it to you, you know? Like, you're hoping someone's gonna bring the parachute, but you're not quite sure. Yeah. Uh, so it's me, I think. And some, in many ways, it's, it's the community that's bringing you one. I mean, that's- Oh, what, totally, yeah, no that's, question. That's probably, uh, yeah. my, like, I have experienced Foodista quite a bit since we first met. I've spent a lot of time yeah. on there. And um, and it seems like mm. the, like, that requires the community, and it's, it's very much the same with what we've done at CreativeLive.com, which is a, a startup uh, mm -hmm. where we're pointing cameras at some of the world's best creative instructors, giving them a platform and sharing it online with the world free. We're banking mm -hmm. that a certain percentage of the population is willing to buy that yep. to offset the, the costs that we incur, tremendous costs in producing that event. Yeah. So our hands are, in a sense, in the community's hands. Yeah. Or our, our, Fate is in the community's hands, yeah. very much so with the, oh, with totally. the, with in the fact, wiki. I think, you know? Yeah, maybe to answer the opposite of that question is what's one of the easiest things been? Actually asking other people for helping, or not the asking, but the getting other people's help. People are so generous, generally. Yeah. I mean, I think, again, it gets back to those, like, we're afraid of, it's the fear that prevents you from doing things. And, I, and I'm, I'm curious, I'd love to hear a little more about some of your um, photography assignments. And, because you have to, you have to, Get people's help to do everything, right? I mean, it's it's you're the you got the camera, but the subjects, your you know the fixers, all the rest of it. And um, the thing I thought probably was going to be hard was getting other people's help, but it, it hasn't been that that, that case for me. Um, mm. But I'm curious for you, like, one, and actually a specific question I have for you is, um, is the fact that you're you're taking picture, making pictures, sorry. That's one of the things I learned from you. No, no, no. I'm, yes. I want to change my language because I think making pictures is so profoundly better. Take that home. Better. Put yes. it in your pipe and smoke it right there. That's right. Make pictures. Well don't take pictures. Yep. But is the fact that you're making pictures of food, does that open doors? Because I find that food as a subject matter as an activity opens doors that would otherwise be shut to me. And some of the stuff you talked about in your presentation in terms of the refugees and the places you went, if you were a political photographer, do you think you would have gotten the same access? And the same intimacy that you got, or is 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 food as one food of the is elements? Food is such a uniter. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, I think it's a safe place to go into people's lives, right. and they let you in pretty easily. Yeah. Oh, you just want to photograph food? Come on. Yeah. It is. It's safe, and they don't think they're not threatened by it, mm -hmm. um, even in a you know politically charged region. So um, I have what I you know when you enter people's lives for a really happy positive mm -hmm. place and you're you're celebrating them basically yeah we're you're celebrating whatever it is that they make mm -hmm. that it's like putty in your hands you know they're 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 excited to, to share their form of sure. art you know yeah. um that's very actually very much at the core of songs for eating and drinking dot com that, that thing that heb and i do together we bring artists together around a common table. Mm -hmm. We feed them in exchange, in sort of a gift economy exchange for mm -hmm. them to play songs. A potlatch kind of a thing. Yeah, and, huh. and it breaks down the barriers. They're interested in hearing from one another. The, the, all of the heavy-handed contracts and all that stuff just melt away mm -hmm. because we're getting together over food and music, mm -hmm. two things that are really culturally um, charged in, in the best way. And I have to think that that, that breaking bread together, totally. it makes a lot of that other baloney melt away. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when they offer you something to eat, you say yes. And that makes them feel even better. You right. know? And then when you say it's amazing, it tastes wonderful, it's like, you can have my house. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if, I, did I answer Yeah, that? absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, eating mm -hmm. Rules says, I'm following at Penny de los Santos to prison. Who's coming with me? <laughs> um, oh, man. And Jack, Jackie Baiza is quoting you. You're never going to get that perfect assignment. You need to give that assignment to yourself. Note oh. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boom. Um, yeah, and Bon Vivant uh, did the same. And so did Jack Honky quoted, quoted you. This is a popular quote now. We are latching on to something for sure. Um, this is a question for the photographers. So I think I know you're a photographer in your own right, but for Penny and Chase, this comes from the uh, culinary fool. Um, I know culinary fool. It's Brenda. Um, you just outed Brenda. I did. <laughs> we hear a lot about writer's block. She asks. Uh -huh. How do you handle photographer's block? 
You first. Um, I definitely have photographer's block. It's I wouldn't call it block. It's more where is my picture? There's not a picture. <laughs> um, and w one, one of the tricks that I do is I will change my physical distance to the subject. So I'm speaking specifically to maybe being in a market or photographing people or photographing in, in a culture. So I'll change my physical space from the subject and I'll, I'll move around the subject, physically move around the subject. I'll, I'll change my perspective. Um, and I notice for me, if I'm having kind of a visual block, it's because um, I'm dealing with something in my own head. Maybe I'm not present or, you know, I just don't have the right enthusiasm and I'm not focused. Maybe I've had a bad morning or I'm, I'm jet lagged and I'm just kind of grumpy, whatever. But if I uh, shift my physical state and then I do I change my perspective, it gets me more kind of engaged. And then it starts to kind of flow. And then I just, you know, the first few pictures aren't going to be great. But as you keep progressing through that, it, you just get more into it. And then the energy starts to happen and you start to move. And then, I mean, it, the energy shifts and changes mm -hmm. and you just, it just starts happening. And then the next thing you know, you don't even remember, you're kind of like struggling with this situation and all of a sudden you've made a picture you're really happy with. Uh, I'm going to take that same question from, it seemed like you addressed it from like, I'm on location needing to make a picture right now. And I'm going to take it from a like 30,000 foot level, like a photographic project or a, um, like a, a, a bigger vision than the I'm in a hurry right this minute. And that for me, like I stay engaged creatively every day. That's one of the reasons I developed the best camera app for iPhone is because I, I, ever since the first day that first iPhone came out, I started taking pictures like crazy. It was my visual journal. It kept me very connected mm -hmm. creatively and finding pictures where pictures didn't exist. I know I can make 10 great pictures within 10 feet of me right now. Some are going to require me to be really close. Some are going to require me to look at a thing I haven't looked at before or in a way I hadn't looked at it or point the camera right at the light or at Scott's camera or wherever. Um, and <clears throat> part two of that, so like there's this like a repetition. You need to be in there making stuff. You need to be in the game, in the paint. Part two is I personally need quiet. I realize that all of the best creative ideas that I've ever had they all came from all the 30,000 foot ones. Like I'm going to do the Seattle 100 project or I'm going to launch best <clears throat> camera or I'm going to create this gallery show of landscapes from New Zealand or something. It all came from quiet, never in the midst of the, the harried moments, um, those fight or flight survival when I'm on location needing to make a picture. When I had all my best creative ideas <clears throat> are walking on the beach up at our cabin up on Camino Island or at three o'clock in the morning looking at the ceiling above my bed or um, in the moments when you least expect them but when there isn't a lot of noise around. So I try and cultivate that, that for myself. From, you know, that helps me get through blocks. So different strokes for different folks. The questions are, are like <coughs> rolling in and so many people are quoting and retweeting, you're never gonna get that perfect assignment, you need to give that assignment to yourself. Like there's probably a hundred of them. Wow. Um, yeah. I need to make a um, I, didn't, I didn't mention this earlier. At our conference, Penny got the only standing ovation. And I had to like wrap up the session and I was totally choked up and tearing up and having a hard time talking. And, and I, you know, and, if, and I was like, is this, is it just me? Because you don't know, because I was sort of, you know, up there. And so many people have mentioned that they got really emotional and choked up over your food photos. Because mm -hmm. they weren't just food photos, it's food culture and the rest of it. But um, yeah. yeah. So I know the retweeting of Penny is not a new phenomenon. It's not a new phenomenon. <laughs> um, for those of you like Jack Hockey who says, Grr, so annoyed that I have a 1 p.m. conference call and I will miss the last 30 minutes of this, um, I should quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> if you're that motivated to quit your job, then you probably should. Um, but I should uh, add that this will be on my uh, YouTube channel, Great. which is youtube.com. I think maybe slash channel, but my handle is a chaser. One, two, three, and this whole thing in its entirety, the 90 minutes, we're going for another 20 minutes still, will be posted there live. So you guys can feel free to direct your audiences Great. there. Wonderful, and thank you. Anybody at home can go check that out. Um, all right, you mentioned food pictures. Mm -hmm. We, I think, are sort of prepared. Like we I came in so. and we said, oh, it'd be so cool if we could show some of Penny's pictures. Um, we're broadcasting in black and white, 
So yeah, I know that that's gonna um, I think handicap your pictures a little bit because you didn't intend for some of them to be that way. Can I look we do that kind of out of one laziness because of all the mixed lighting. Two, what's that? Her pictures are color. Her pictures are available in color. The technology here awesome. is amazing. Isn't it amazing? D'Artagnan, mad respect, brother, love it. How's it going, Norton? Do you need something from me right now? Um, I think she does need the Ethernet cable. Oh, I do. Thank the you. will probably chime in one of your ears that we need the Ethernet cable. While we're getting that set up, I'm going to go back to the phones here. Um, Thank you. Could you live without photography? Is it your life or is it just work? From, also from Dennis. Man. Just I, let the, I want to make this as simple. Like you need to be able to be looking at this and doing that and answering this question. Is photography your life or is it work? It's my life. It's a lifestyle. It's never been a job. Penny, have you ever felt the pressure to move into video as an addition? Yes. Did I say anything else about <laughs> no, that? No, no, no. That's killer. <laughs> oh, the quote that I was looking for is, um, it's not from, from uh, my friend Gerard, but you can... S-H-I-T in one hand and wish in the other and see which one fills up faster. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard of that one. Yeah, heard me neither. Sort of versions okay. of that. Profound. Very profound. Yeah. Um, D'Artagnan, are we in a good spot to show some of Penny's pictures? Because when I talked to Barnaby originally, it was really, uh, you, well, you spoke about sure. several things. I'm honored picture. to. Photographing in among, among the many things we discussed, photographing in the world's most suicide-bombed market in the world was something that I was very moved by. I was terrified for you. I have so much respect for the folks like James Nackway and totally. war photographers. Like, that, that's pretty incredible. What, what's it like to go there? I steer clear of those places. I don't even bungee jump. <laughs> 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 um, well, I mean, it, ironically, it was a food assignment, and it was about this market. So, um, did you go in with flak jackets and helmets, or no. did you just got it? It's not you how just, she rolls. You just, um, well, I mean, the, the the other part, the other element is that you know, being a photographer in that environment is mm -hmm. it's hard. People don't want their pictures made. Um, it's an interesting culture, so you don't want to look like a photographer. You know, you want to dumb down your gear. You want to be you want to be one body the lens you've got on your body, and that's it. That's great advice. That's you don't want to look anything like a photographer, so, so that you can blend. And you so don't you wear, do you wear a hat with the big thing that says press and a, a jacket that looks like you're uh, <laughs> going fly fishing and do you have a bunch of lenses sticking out? Uh, not on this assignment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I have to say something out. actually, if I can, about Penny. You know, Penny is a really interesting individual because I, I, I watched you throughout the conference a fair amount. Um, and it was really interesting to see how you could stand up on stage and just keep people completely captivated. Like, there's not an eye in the room that's on anything but you and your photography. Um, and then at the same time, the way you were able to just kind of meld into the crowd and be like here and there and sort of not be the focus of attention. And I totally got like how you could in this market, like do what you do. Because mm. you, you've cool. got that ability to shift back and forth, so. That's cool. Shuck and jive. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna um, play a couple of yeah, these. I hope that didn't creep you out that I just said I was watching, watching, watching you. Not at all. <laughs> no, that's cool. So I think I we, should, we should articulate what it is that we're looking at. So, so they I think can so, see so, this. So D'Artagnan, I believe, hey Scott, can you tell me if D'Artagnan can you? tell me if they can see this now? <laughs> you, you have somebody on your staff called D'Artagnan? Yeah, wow. the fourth musketeer. Yeah. Seriously, amazing. Um, what is it that we're looking at there, Scott? What does D'Artagnan tell us we're looking at? Oh, she's got a direct feed of Penny's laptop. Sweet. So everything you show, people can see? That's oh, so cool. cool. How about, can you put that on the, the uh, you're not drinking your champagne very quickly, but. I love this, you guys. I love this show so much. I mean, as a photographer and a director myself, being able to connect with other photographers and directors and people who are in areas of culture that I love be it food in your case, Barnaby, mm -hmm. a hip hop music, a circus troupe. Eric's got a heck of a dance troupe that I'm involved in. No, I'm just kidding. But like that is so cool. And we're sitting here with Penny De Los Santos looking at her pictures 
And it, it's um, this one's obviously amazing. It's incredibly amazing. Save that for oh, later, or that story, that's, um, or you know, I, one thing I would start maybe. I mean, sure, I don't sure, want to sure, Tell sure. you what to do, but you, the, where you talked about light and the uh, Chinese restaurant, I mean, I learned a lot. I keep tapping my mic. And no, you, you actually you, you cited oh. that that particular thing on the well, telephone to me. Well, this is um, this yeah. is like you know, fo fo food photography 101. You know, when you can't find nice. But I never light. took that class. Yeah, so. but a lot of people and a lot of people <laughs> out there haven't taken this sure, class. Sure, 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 absolutely. I'm not assuming anything, but. Um, where is that picture? So basically, I, I, I went to a Chinese restaurant, um, like one of those Asian markets, and the light was horrible. Big fluorescent lights. And, and I, I think the best way to see food is, is with natural light, really. And so what do you do? You go where the, dump, you know, you go where the exit is, and you prop open the door with a, a chair. And um, the dumpster's right there. So it's not pretty, but they're not going to see that. Your, your person looking at the picture is not going to see that. So then you prop, you know, use a trash can and use that as your surface and you just um, put your food down there and you make you, a picture. Your trash can, so you flip it over so flip you've got like a... There it is. I mean, you can tell it's a trash can, but you can't. I but we can. couldn't. And like when right. you presented this in the room, you showed this and you didn't tell us it was a trash can first. And then you said, and then I put it on a trash can and there's a gasp in the room. Like, Oh, really? Yeah, because people are like, so oh, dirty. she does this beautiful like blue, um, you know, it says tray recycle, that, she, that she found that she put it on. And then like it turns out and then you're like, oh, yeah, that's a trash can. <laughs> hey, Eric, does D'Artagnan say we've got a good good feed of this? Thank, cool. Thanks a lot, man, for, for rigging that up. This is amazing. So, yeah, I mean, this is just really nice, beautiful natural light, maybe bouncing some in from the other side so you don't get too... Yeah, you get the trash can lid here acting as your reflector. You get the trash can upside down. No, okay. I love it. I love it. Keep going, please. Um, this is also, I believe this is also, and so I changed my surface and I took a cardboard box. I like the plate was all chipped up and, you know, just making it completely accessible. So this is real. This is accessible. This is, there's no <laughs> styrofoam. There's no hairspray. There's no duct tape. There's no... Um, urethane involved in making these pictures. Those are those days gone, or do people still do that? I mean, commercial stuff? photography, they definitely still do that. Their sets are a lot more intense and mm -hmm. built up. Those are that's. I live that side on the lifestyle yeah. end of things, and it is intense, but it's still going on. And in like, don't definitely in the of, in the commercial food. Yeah. But what absolutely. about in in uh, maybe that's tater tots? But what about like the commercial? I guess commercial photography that has to do with food that's healthy. Like that's there's so such an amazing I still see movement. Because I've take, I took a class there where they talked about using motor oil for maple syrup and the rest of it. And motor oil for maple syrup. Yeah, heavy. Like I think 50 grade. Yeah. 50 grade, of course. Wouldn't yeah. want to use 40. No. But or I mean, 30, 30, um, 10. But I sort of I see that now when I look at like you know using um, uh, soap suds for the, you know the, the little bit of bubbles on coffee and things and you know I, sort of mm. now I see it in magazines in ways that I didn't. Um, I, my, my, actually, it, my like life. The chip on this is the kind of thing that I love about this photography. Right. Know? My life goes through life seeing, like, oh, I'm watching, even in, a, in, a, in feature films, I see, oh, cool, they've got a 10K out that window there. And unfortunately, my mind is constantly translating this stuff. Um, and you're doing it with the things that you're eating, so I yeah. feel even worse for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this was an assignment in Idaho. Just, you know, I have to always show a sense of place, mm -hmm. geography. So what do you do? You, you, you get up early and you look for the, the good light or stay out late when the light's nice. Mm -hmm. That looks like some routine. Ennis and, uh, hmm. where is that? That's in Idaho. Oh, um, I was going Montana, sorry. Lava Hot Springs outside of it. Lava Hot Springs. I was doing a story on these Basque sheep herders. There's like this entire community of Basque That's a sheep stunning, farmers. stunning okay. photograph. Thank you. Number 22 here, he plays for the, uh, <laughs> so they're, 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 like, they're hurting like 3,000 um, of these sheep. It was There's amazing. me. <laughs> no, sorry. This is really a stunning photograph. Thank you. And I mean, I just hung with him for a while. And you know, the thing, when you show up for these assignments, they don't really tell you where their pictures are. You know, you just have right. to like interview the hell out of people. So again, you know, trying to break out of the... Uh, I'm changing my perspective, I'm moving around, kind of like that question we had earlier. Yeah. But I mean, the, the, your feet are some of the most amazing um, tools in yeah. photography. Like, oh, I don't have the right lens, I don't have the right, like, yeah. move your feet, move your ass, get going. Yep. Like, stop standing in one place, totally. investigate, get close, get far. Like, that, that is a huge, um, yep. that's a huge yep. 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 undervalued, undervalued, under, undervalued, can't say it. Undervalued. 
Are guys cool. eating tacos, maybe? I don't know. In photography. The tacos? Screw the, the lens change. The screw the, oh, the fancy girl. camera body. Or the, guy, the knife holding the door shuts was another one that... All right, I all totally right. missed it until you you mentioned it. And it uh, this yeah, there's so many amazing pictures. Oh, yeah, there. It was this is, um, so Sever just did an entire issue on L.A. I got the cover. What? Uh, what's that? <laughs> West Side. In the West Side of like Los Angeles. There you go. L.A.'s, I, I have a home. I love L.A. After this, after this assignment, I was like, wow. So, yeah, I'm, you know, scouting around trying to get a picture that says L.A. and food and so I found this really great mural, mural and I just waited for um, I just waited for some guys to eat tacos in front of it. My big takeaway from this was waiting for the picture to happen. Like mm -hmm. you saw the picture before it happened and you waited for the Oh, guys I scouted to, that. I found that and I was like, that's and a photo. you know. Yeah. I, I have done the same thing with, with in this kind of the street photography genre, mm -hmm. walking around with my iPhone, for example. I posted a, a picture on my blog yesterday. Asking people which is better, A or B. These are just snapshots oh, from that's my a iPhone. Oh, great post. I saw that. I mean, yeah. just absolutely super You've got like basic. Three hundred comments on there. Yeah, usually like this is a little bit lacking because there's a lot of stuff going on, on the internet right now. Usually there's over a thousand, but the, the what the commentary is. These are very very basic pictures, but everyone's got a point of view, and with both of those uh, shots, I just like, oh wow, this is a kind of gonna be a cool picture. And I just pointed my camera at it, and then a certain people walked into the frame, and I just took a picture and walked away. Same with the Ferris wheel. And to, to make a connection with the picture you just described, uh, where you're just sitting there waiting, you found something interesting, and waiting for a subject to unknowingly walk into, mm. your, wah, into your trap. Totally, yeah. <laughs> like and spiders. This one is just about looking for light. You know, wait. I mean, these, these taco trucks that kind of move around, these mobile taco mm -hmm. trucks in LA, and just waiting for nice light, you know, um, and using shadows and smoke. And sure. MPM Photo asks, can you give us some advice, Penny, on how to improve food photography? Are these things that we're talking about, like waiting for light? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, that, to me, it all applies. I mean, what, what's cool about food photography is I actually learned a ton about light shooting food. Isn't that weird? It's weird. You see it, you see it hit the French fry, you know what I mean? You can see it. Yeah. Well, and it, it, you, it just, it, it totally translates. So. If, if you see beautiful light and you're making a beautiful food portrait in that same light, you're probably going to be able to make a great portrait of a person mm -hmm. in that light or get a beautiful moment in that same light. Um, so I think the first key is to look for really nice light in any, in any you know, location you're at. Just look for nice light. And if you don't have it, wait for it. Create the light if you, if you can. Depends on how you feel about that. Um, that's, that's, light is a really integral aspect That's like to the number photography, one. right? Um, I mean, there are other <coughs> elements, of course, but... Some great, great uh, shout-outs yeah. online right now. Um, GF Celebration says, Go Penny, with about 280 E's. What's that After mean? it, Go Penny! Oh. <laughs> um, there's a triple echo for Christian Winjum. Restart your browser, Christian. Or Chris, Krista. Krista. Krista Winjum. <coughs> yeah. Krista, try to restart your browser. Sorry. Um, I know that I'm not saying things three times. I don't know about you guys, but... Um, no, no, no. It's the fear that prevents you from doing things, quote, Barnaby Dorfman. Mm. Um, wow, let's see. It's all these food bloggers. We should point this out. Oh, okay, so are we looking at this like, picture? Yep, keep okay, talking so about that Okay, so this picture. is again from the LA story, and I mean, this guy was uh, making chile rellenos, but was, what was really cool is that, for me, the detail with the knife in the back of the door, and it's a, it's a quiet picture, but it's just these little small details that kind of, and that, I think, nuances in photographs. Oh, it's, that's all in the details. It's all in the details. God There's a circus the performer details. standing in front of you. His shoe's got to be untied. His nose yeah. has got to be uncrooked. There yeah. has to be a knife stuck in the door in the back. All okay. those things are great. I think. Yeah. So many photographers seek perfection, and we, they, they should really be striving for imperfection for the off moments. Totally. Again, I'm going back to Seattle 100, there are no yearbook moments <laughs> in Seattle 100. It's all the, yeah. the, the moment, yeah. the, the off moment yeah, moments. Yeah, it's the moment after the moment. Mm -hmm. It's the period, it's the, the moment after the period. I have that same hat, no way. We're you going do. back, to, yeah, go back, I'm just kidding. Go back to uh, Penny's desktop, because this is incredible. Some of these images oh, are so I'll beautiful. Oh, go back to Yeah, I was, I was asking my, my what, technical crew. Well, uh, well, there's this one. The guys. Oh, th this, is, this is actually one of my, like, because of uh, the situation behind the picture. This is. This is why this I was crying on um, stage, basically. This is in Beirut, <laughs> Lebanon. 
there was a story on uh, these are all Iraqi refugees who fled Iraq because of the war and, and their lives are really they have no other option it's either like take arms and fight against against the movement or be killed so in most cases I mean it's it's kind of crazy because there's a lot of these young men who have fled to the neighboring countries and so and they live in the bowels of places like Beirut it's really kind of sad because they, they're they're like third and fourth class citizens it's, mm. and they're you know they're neighborhoods that are run by um, extremist groups and so you have to be very careful when you um, when you're with them because you can put them in danger and they can be deported back to their country which is unsafe so uh, it was a food story about how these men these Iraq refugees get together and they cook to remember where they came from Wow um, it was That's during so cool. it was cool it was cool um, and it's during Ramadan, which is not a great time to shoot a food story. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> that sucks. During the time where we don't eat, we shall send you on a food assignment. All I have to say is you can't, you can't eat during the day. Even, I mean, no, no restaurants are open. It's like, this is bad. We're going to send you to shoot the Super Bowl. It's the off season. <laughs> you know? Who produced this story? That's incredible. Um, um, yeah. You guys, the, the questions are pouring in between 15 and 60 per minute now. Good. Um, and I, I can't keep up with them, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plow through a handful so that we can sure. really feel like we're connecting with the folks online. Film or digital, Penny? Digital. Mm -hmm. Oh, I actually got the uh, strive for imperfection rather than perfection. Look for off moments. <clears throat> um, Penny, you're so inspiring. Um, you know you're hooked when your dinner is cold by the time you're done taking pictures of it. Yeah. That I happens love to that. me a lot. <laughs> that, that's, 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 that's great. Um, talk to me about model releases. There's some technical stuff. Oh, this yeah, fruit fly is driving me crazy. There's a fruit fly. Yeah. It's, 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 fly. it's a food show. I mean, maybe it just. Sure, yeah. It, up my nose. He's like, I'm here. I'm here. I want to be on. Sorry. Um, Talk to me about releases and how do, how do you deal with that? Uh, the people, the places, the it depends if it's on the commercial or editorial. If it's commercial, you always have to have a release. Yep. It depends on the magazine, the publication. I know for Sever, I don't normally have to have a re mm. release, but if I'm shooting for Martha Stewart or it just depends. Some publications are they cover everything. You probably know this, and, and it can be a in overwhelming. The, yeah, in the commercial world, it's there's there's no gray area, and yeah. if if the person can recognize themselves. A model release is required, even if they're 200 feet in the background, mostly out of focus. But if they know they have that pink pants and that purple top and that fedora, like they're going to be recognizable. We we are we are really hardcore about it. But you know, in editorial, it's it's very different, right? You're you're telling a story. It is, it is. But I, I mean, I, it just depends on the publication. I, and I feel like they're getting more and more now. Because someone asked this question when yeah. I was presenting, yeah. and I answered it. Look, no, I didn't need model releases, and I didn't for Sabur. I haven't yet, but there are other publications that definitely demand it. Um, how long did you have to wait? Asks, I'm in photos for that picture of the taco guys. You know what? I I actually drove by that scene tons of times, and I just. I, I wouldn't stop unless someone was there. And I started seeing a larger group of people ordering tacos, and I stopped, and I probably had to wait like 20 or 30 minutes. But I didn't, you should know that I, I mean, I, I didn't pull out my camera. I mean, it's East LA, some people aren't comfortable with having their picture made. So I just kind of hung out and waited for those guys to get settled and start eating, and then I knew. Well, they're both kind of looking down there, like into their yeah, tacos, they were not, you know? I mean, they weren't about to smile for the camera not, at all. They were like, but it's not, you weren't like hiding in a bush for two days waiting. <laughs> not this time, no. Not, not, this, this yeah, not, not, not on this particular assignment. Um, I'm going to take a uh, little break for just a second. A um, couple of Twitter handles that we could get people to pay attention to. If you love food, um, you love the discussion of food, recipes, all the things, you're, you're at Foodista. Yep. And then... Uh, Personally, you're you're at Barnaby. Yep, that's right? me. Yep. Um, and then also um, the the hashtag IFBC from our conference seems to be taking on a life of its own, and I think that conversation is gonna gonna keep going. We had a really interesting dynamic uh, throughout the conference. We we brought in a ton of bandwidth, which you guys used also for your yeah, uh, for, for sure. your wedding. Yeah. And so yeah. everybody you know was tweeting away, and it, it's an interesting new social dynamic where you've got you know like. Suddenly the room will start laughing, and nobody told a joke because, like, it happened in Twitter, and um, yeah. 250 people tweeting away, and it's, it's, it's 
pretty fascinating. So that, if you want to check out sort of how that conversation's been going, I would say check that one out. I actually hashtag think that was, that was kind of a fun, dynamic part of the conference, the whole hashtag. Yeah, there, and there's one going on right now that's crossing all of our various Twitter handles. I'm at Chase Jarvis, mm -hmm. of course. You're at, the, I'm gonna, you're at Penny De Los Santos with one S in the, not Los Santos, but your name has two S's. Right, well, because Twitter, you can't fit, I, they couldn't fit all that in there, so I had Penny, to cut an S out. P E N N Y De Los Santos. Santos. <laughs> yes. Penny De Los Santos. Perfecto. Um, perfecto, sí, sí, por supuesto. Um, the hashtag CJ Live is crossing all of our, our Twitter handles nice. right now, so you guys can go ahead and and, um, and and pull that stuff down if you want. Uh, people love hearing, you know, Mango Power Girl loves hearing the stories. Um, Emily um, Sokoloff is, is reminding us that we should strive for imperfection rather than perfection. Um, a lot of people are asking if um, I will have you on to Creative Live, which is wow. our worldwide education um, platform, uh, and have you do a food photography seminar. So I'm not going to put the pressure of national <laughs> broadcast, internet, worldwide, live television on your shoulders right now, but just consider it. I think we could make an amazing show yeah. where you go out into the world and photograph some things, bring those images back, show people how to do it in the studio as well. So cool. That'd be fun. I'd I'm love not that. leaving here. You don't know it, but I've already handcuffed you to the couch. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be awesome. That, I would definitely I would I would that, watch actually. that. Yeah. It would be cool, and, and the world would, would benefit greatly. Um, <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about struggle. Mm. Like in what sense? Is this someone asking this? This is not, no, this is me. Uh, in what sense? Like career struggle or Talk to me struggle? about struggle. You categorize it. You're struggling to answer this question. Everybody that I know, I know. who's an artist well, yeah. struggles. And whether we struggle to pay our bills or we struggle to make a good picture, we struggle to find our way in the world, to find our voice as an artist, we struggle. And I'm banking that if I just ask you to talk to me about struggle, that one of the most important struggles in your life, whatever that is, is going to boil to the surface. So tell me about it. Struggle. Okay, struggle. Um, I think for me, probably the biggest struggle is, um, well, there's a, there's a handful. Um, I struggled a while with um, kind of like, okay, here's where my career is. I'm, all of a sudden, I'm at the, this amazing food magazine, and I really thought I was going to be here. Um, and that was a little bit of a struggle. And then I realized I was happy, and I was making pictures and seeing the world. And um, where's the struggle in that, you know? And, and I felt like I was making good pictures, which is really, at the end of, end of the day, that's what it's about for me. Thankfully, I haven't had to struggle financially. I have made it through the past few years of a recession, which I think a lot of photographers and I think editorial photographers have taken a big hit. Big hit. Um, big hit. So, knock on wood, right. I, I've been okay. Um, but I struggle with, a, a, you know, I travel a ton, so when I get home, it's it's always hard integrating back into my life. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, a little bit of a struggle. And so I try to make my personal life as simple and as easy and gentle and loving as possible. And that's taken a while to figure that out, you know? Whoa. So I, that's... I second that. <laughs> I, I, too, am on the road almost constantly. And uh, making the home chill yeah. when you get home is really important. Yeah. Very important. <clears throat> Sir, I struggle. I struggle with what not to do. Like I, I have tons of ideas. I love variety. I want to eat a different thing every day. I want to be in a different place every day, and you know, that's just not practical. And for my business, there are so many ideas. I mean, one of the things that's so great about the web is you can do almost anything, but that's also the curse is you mm. can do just about anything. And and so. Um, how to prioritize and how to say we're not going to do this, we're going to do that, and um, stick to it is a, a personal challenge, which I think a firm on my team is watching this, and they're all going like, yeah. yes, he yeah, has dude. that problem. Shut her down. <laughs> and these two guys are not in their cameras right now because we struggle with the same thing. I yeah. mean, the question isn't necessarily asked of me, but I, I'm going to answer it anyway because 
um, at a certain point, there's so many opportunities coming at you, and deciding what not to do is actually more important yeah. than what to do. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, and and there's a lot of weight, and we have a lot of um, kind of inter inter office discussion about what's what creative things to to what, what creative paths to follow. Yeah. Um, wonderful opportunity to be in that position, but it's a very it's just as real of a challenge as, as how to get your next meal, really. Yeah. And I also, just to pick up on another thing you said earlier, I am bad about putting that down a book. If I start it, I feel like it just stays in my head. And the same with other pro projects. I'm not good at walking away from things that I've started when I should. Mm -hmm. So I, that's a big takeaway from today from one of the things you said in terms of learnings is just it's okay to like just drop some things on the floor and yeah. go back to other things. Um, so that's a struggle for me. Mm. Beautiful. Um, let's just go on for a couple minutes more. The, again, the questions are pouring in like nuts. Um, Penny, do you ever use flash when the light isn't right? This comes in from TS Ice Cream. Uh, I mean, it, it depends on the situation. Um, I guess if I had to, if it was nighttime and I was in Russia and I had one night to shoot, yeah, absolutely. But if I had, um, you know, if I had my way and I had an extra day, and if it was the subject matter was that important, I would try to find better light. Better natural light. Yeah, I mean, if, are we talking about a food subject? Or are we talking about a, a you know, a, a people in, in a situation? I mean, it, they didn't, they didn't specify. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I answered that question, but yeah, you did a great job. Um, the question, yeah, I'm not going to answer that because that was to me. I'm in photos. Um, there's a lot of quotes now. Like, you're just dropping these. These amazing bombs <laughs> like styling out right here. Mm -hmm. Create a gentle, simple, and loving life at home. That's that's something that I'll definitely take mm -hmm. away. That's, you should have your own line of fortune cookies. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Always back to awesome. food, Barnaby. Always back to food. Um, well, let's go back to a couple more of your pictures okay. here. I'll pull some more questions online, and we'll wrap this up in the next couple of minutes. Okay. Let's do Great. it. So this is in Greece. Um, D'Artagnan, are we able to go back to that? <clears throat> cool. I just did a two-week assignment in Greece, and Sever has a, a big issue right now. You know, the interesting thing, and you might be able to talk about this, like maybe I was there for two weeks, and mm -hmm. I would say 1% to 2% of the photos I made actually ran, which is fine because I feel really good about the material I got. But um, a lot of my stuff doesn't make the page. And, you know, I learned a long time ago that that's, you know, let go of that end result immediately. Mm -hmm. Like, because you cannot live by that printed page because it will break your heart every time, you know? Yep. It's weird, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. Because I would say that the majority of my favorite pictures never make a printed page. Yeah. Well, as a member <laughs> of your audience, if I may, I love this issue. I remember the photos from it. And if, if I could... You said at the end, go to penitosantos.com or severa.com or whatever it is to see the ones that didn't make it into print. Right. I would be there every single time. Oh, that's interesting. So, and I'm sure there are other people like me. I should yeah. mention that to the editor. Yeah, let us know online if that's something like I have to say the same, like the campaign images that run when we shoot commercial assignments and, and clips in commercials that run. Would you guys like to see director's cuts? Would you like to see... Um, the behind the scenes photos. My, my inclination is that you would, but <coughs> it's, there's a lot of extra effort involved often in, in our case to make that happen. And let us know at hashtag CJ Live if you want to see the uncut. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll pin that on Savour Magazine and say, hey, they, look what they want to see. They want to see your edit, but they want to see my edit too. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about that with a particular film I'm working on right now where I know it's not necessarily going to get to go the way I want it to go, <laughs> so I'm, uh, maybe a director's cut. Um, cool. So keep going. This is, like, I want to see a half a dozen more pictures. So this is in Bahia in Brazil, um, this big street market that I photographed. Um, it's called the Lavagem de Bom Fim, where they wash these steps of this amazing cathedral, and it's a massive procession. First time I ever got pickpocketed, and I caught the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and what'd you do to it? I was like, him or her? Ah, her. She was like crying in tears. It's actually a great story. Because I was going to make her picture because she was so emotional. Uh -huh. She was right next to me. And you're I, holding her in arms like <laughs> I'm like, don't stop crying, damn it. You can have what's in my pocket, but let me get my picture first. Um, no, and, and so I, I was like, oh, this lady's crying. And then I feel something in my 
pocket and it's her hand and I grab it and I turn and it's that lady and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and she ran off scurrying. We actually hired bodyguards because we knew yeah. the pickpocketing wow. was so bad yeah. in Brazil. Wow. Mm -hmm. Norton is Brazilian over there. <laughs> and, uh, I know. He tried to I, like I, yeah, I know, get some of my stuff too, yeah. man. <laughs> Pickpocketed me this morning when I came in. Amazing photograph, though. I this love is this in one. one of the markets. Just you know, waiting, waiting for a moment, wait, waiting for a nice moment to happen, finding a good kind of like perspective, and mm -hmm. then just waiting for the layers to build. You know, I love the, the very yeah, the very non-traditional like bisection of the photograph there mm -hmm. is really cool. And as you mm -hmm. moment, as you mentioned, waiting for the decisive moment, the Cartier Bresson uh, famous saying there, just just waiting like mm -hmm. like a hunter for, for for prey. Getting in that zone, you know, and just just letting it happen. Beautiful. Give us another <clears throat> detail. Just a, just a nice detail of some produce in the market. On an oil can. On an oil can in in in, um, in Portuguese. So. Sem colesterol. This is a farofa mill in the mountain ranges on one of the islands. Again, it's just, it's all about the light. I had some dust in my lens on that one, sorry guys. Channeling, uh, this is in um, the Basque country. Mm. <clears throat> you know, just, I mean, really, it's elements of good street photography too. You're just following the moment, waiting for. This is a food shot, right? Yeah. You know, these are the, this is the black book, the uh, yeah, jamón ibérico, yeah. wow. pata negra, pata negra. This is. Have you ever you've had jamón ibérico? Me. Right? It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to talk about dissecting little, little babies like this that. This is in India. You've been to India? Photograph yet? I was just going <laughs> to say a lot of people requesting photographs from India. Can we go to India? All right, we're in India. Take us there. We're in India. It was a a, a food assignment again. This is a. Um, Again, here's a situation where the lights sucked, but I love that they had all these hats on and the guy, the, the main chef was there and they look like they've been butchering people. I mean, they're just completely <laughs> bloodied and it's like, I mean, you, who pays I've, a kitchen I've staff photographed though? in a slaughterhouse before, mm. in a commercial sign, if you can believe it, wow. very freaky. And what a strange place that is. That's intense. Blood. Yeah, a lot of blood. And I see a lot of blood on the hands and aprons of these guys here. I just like that they were so kind of official. I don't know if we're still looking at these pictures now. Um, and again, just following color, thinking about color and good color is, that's one of the gift of God, of the gods, you know, the photo gods. So you just, you know, wait for a nice color, maybe some motion and, and uh, maybe it's a picture, maybe it's not. I love this one. <clears throat> you know, just, just waiting for the right moment to happen where everybody kind of forgets you're there and you're finally just quietly making your picture. You sit at the table in front of them and that's the other thing. I want, I want, I want people to like feel like they're sitting there with these people and eating a meal, and they're gonna. I love the, the expression of the waiter in the background. Yeah, I was too. waiting for that. I was yeah. like, I just need something to fill that corner. And then that guy walked past and kind of smirked. turned his head and smirked, and I thought, there it is. And then the woman, you know, kind of reached in for the non there. And, you know. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's take a break from your photographs just for one second to go back. Oh, that's a great one to end on. I don't know. We oh, uh, I scrolled back um, because the, again, there are. Questions coming in every, almost literally every second. We're at 14, 14, 15, 15, 20, 24 seconds now. Um, and we're going to try and blow through a handful of these questions in and, and an attempt to kind of wrap up our session. We've gone about uh, 90 minutes now. Um, and don't you guys love the long form? Like it's radio, cool. like, yeah, it's, it's not fun. TV. I don't know it's if you fun. guys have TV experience. It's always mm -hmm. so, yeah. so sound it's bite nice. driven. Yeah. And OK, you're going to like, uh, and then it's like, oh, thanks, you were on. It was great. You didn't even yeah. know what happened. Um, hopefully this long format works for you guys at home. It's yeah, working for us. It's working for me. Um, so we're going to blow through some pictures here. In street scenes, do you ever use telephoto lenses um, so you don't have to get seen without? By, don't have to get seen by your subject? Never. Never. What do you Absolutely shoot with, not. Nikon or Canon? Canon. And you need to sponsor me. <laughs> 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 I have sold so many of your cameras. Mm. Wait for the layers to build is a quote. Uh, a lot of people have responded to that question. I said they'd love to see what you suggested, Barnaby, is the director's cut yeah. or, or the unedited images or the, the, the photographer's take. Well, in particular, the ones that you're heartbroken didn't make it into the book. That's the one, I mean, those are the ones. I want to see it all, but in particular, the ones that didn't make it into the book that you felt should be there, I'd put those at the top because that's, that's what I want. Got it. Right. Um, and that would be less than doing everything, too, yeah. just to bring some practical stuff yeah. in. What's your most memorable experience 
with food, Barnaby? Uh, it's probably always around cooking. I mean, I, I think whenever I'm able to, to cook a great meal and share it with other people, like that's, as much as I love eating, I, I love feeding even more. Um, so it's probably around... I call eating feeding, so I'm, I'm confused yeah. right now. I like feed and strap that stuff to my face. Yeah. Right? Um, God, I really, it would be really hard to boil it down, but uh, I do this thing where I remove all the bones from a turkey and then sew it up and stuff it and it looks like a whole turkey. And I've done that a number of times and it's kind of this big reveal and it's a Thanksgiving thing. And so Very that, cool. that's what comes to mind, but Very cool. I, that's, that's another long form conversation actually. Got it. And what about you, favorite location? Again, from Redonna. Favorite location? Yep. Yeah, I don't have a favorite. They're all amazing. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, I've been in some incredible places. It's the people that grab my heart. And it's the people, not the food, right? People I mean, the food's food. amazing too, but it's really the people. There's a connection there. I mean, I'm a photographer, so it's mm. all about connecting with people. I mean, that's what makes great, I think makes great photographs. Is you, and, and that's what a good photographer does, they connect. Do you uh, submit your images to sites like Food Gawker and Taste Spotting, or is it really more for print, like Savour? I do not submit my photos to any of those sites. Got it. A lot of people are agreeing with the struggles that Barnaby has mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and like within yourself, really. Mm -hmm. um, uh, question from Food Post Inc. Question for both Penny and Barnaby. How do you handle detractors and critics? I you don't, don't have any. I don't have any. <laughs> no, 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 well, I mean, it's, you, you, you don't hear from them as directly as we do. I mean, I think, you know, I, I mean, you know, I'm a person, so it's hard when, when people are critical, but I, I'm just blown away by the, the, the overwhelming generosity, and it's just, I mean, I, I just focus on that. You know? uh, Beautiful. But you do get it directly on the web, as you, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I, a lot of people hate yeah. me. I'm, I'm, I'm a. <laughs> Um, love or hate kind of, kind of experience, I feel like, and there's a million people or a hundred thousand people or ten people that pay attention to you. There's a certain cross-section yep. of those people that aren't going to like what you do, and if everybody likes what you're doing, you're probably doing something wrong, I feel like, and yep. um, they're entitled to their opinion. So, Can I take one quick moment to pitch something? Please do. Um, so my partner, Zephyr Adventures, um, are putting on two more conferences, the Wine Bloggers Conference, winebloggers.org, and Beer Bloggers Conference, beerbloggers.org. Um, and one's in actually in Europe, in Vienna, Austria. I think you have a European audience as we, well. And yep, so I think these are just great experiences to get together with other people, practice what it is that you're doing, learn from people like Penny. Um, and um, I just want to throw that out there. No, that's great. And, and that's one of the things that I, I love, the connection that people can make from the, the web, the ethereal, always moving, changing mm -hmm. web, and real life. So if you can actually attend one of those conferences, mm -hmm. that, that would be amazing. Um, and so that, that was a, a great little plug there. I appreciate it very much. Uh, what am I missing? What, what do you guys want to say that, as, as I kind of sign out here, um, didn't get said? Is there anything? I guess let's, let's hear your digits on the old web. You, you're at pennydelosantos.com, right? Right, two S's, pennydelosantos.com. My Twitter handle is pennydelosantos, one S. <laughs> <laughs> I have a blog too, but yeah. whatever. That's, that's, you can access that from your site. <laughs> yeah, totally, right? totally. Uh, I'm uh, foodista.com, and I uh, would love to have all of you share your ability and knowledge and wisdom and, and photos. Um, it's, a, it's a wiki, so please edit. And then um, uh, at foodista on Twitter and at Barnaby on Twitter, and also hashtag IFBC for our conference, which is just a hoot to, to tune into. Sweet. And I, of course, am at Chase Jarvis on Twitter. Um, ChaseJarvis.com slash blog, Facebook.com slash Chase Jarvis, and, and YouTube where this will be replayed. Um, and actually an audio podcast of this will go up uh, probably tomorrow on iTunes. Great. The whole thing, if you don't want to watch us because we're, we're not all that pretty, then you can listen to us. And if you want to watch us on, on uh, YouTube, probably tomorrow if not the next day, that's at YouTube.com. Uh, my handle is achaser123. Without further uh, burning of your ears and the time clock, because I'm getting tapped on the shoulder from my producer that we're running long, <laughs> thank you so much for paying attention. This has been one of my Thanks. favorite uh, episodes or issues or whatever you call it in a long time. Again, integrating the things that we love, food, culture, photography, film, and, and the internet. So yeah. thank you for having me. My yeah. pleasure. It's a this super treat. Super treat. Um, I bid you adieu. I think that's a wrap. Um, and it probably takes like 10 seconds for them to turn it off.